Beach Friday. Starring Mark Whitefield, Mary Edith Corral, Melanie Chartoff, Larry Davis, Darrell Agus, Brendis Kent, Bruce Mahler, Michael Richards, John Rourke, and I'm Jack Burns. I'm Jack Burns, and don't you ever forget that. All right? And to that critic who said about a year ago that I was burnt out and this show wouldn't last a year, hey, stuff it in your ear, baby. This is my birthday. We're going to swing tonight. We're both going to be around a long time. Okay. And this is your first sketch. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. No, that's no good. How about this? The Milky Way. It was my kind of galaxy. In what other 10 billion mile radius can you find people like the Marquis de Sade and, and Willie Mays on the same planet? <laughs> Too sentimental. Maybe I better start from the beginning. I was a filmmaker, refused to give in to the dark side of Hollywood. is not the movie I finance. Yes, D.V. I mean, no, D.V. But no. he made some marvelous statements. Let's face it, Woody Allen is a genius. But it wasn't funny. <laughs> you fools. Serious movies don't make it at the box office. Lando, what do you think of this artsy, smartsy garbage? D.V., baby, it's boring. I tell you, it'll get over with the uptown critics, but it'll never play on Pluto, trust me. Then he must be stopped. Get this Woody Allen and bring him to me. You got it, pussycat. Love you, man. Woody must be taught the power of the dark force. He must go Hollywood. Come on in, it's okay. This is, this is great, you know, this is really fantastic. So, so this is Ingmar Bergman's office? This is it. I'm, 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 I'm stunned, you know, because Bergman is one of my all-time favorite manic depressives. He's wonderful. <laughs> hey, what? You're not, you're not Ingmar Bergman. Gods. Hey, listen, fellas, nothing, nothing personal, but I, I, I always don't like to go to parties where, where hoods are required, you know, because... <laughs> Good work, Lando. Thank you, Lord Vader. Now may I have that part in Roots 3? You sold me out for an acting part? Jeez, who are these people? We come from another galaxy. <laughs> A gigantic black hole where time and space have no meaning. Where order is chaos and chaos is order. In my galaxy, we call that the Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Join me, Woody, and learn about the dark power. I knew I shouldn't have come here. I, I never get along with these Hollywood producers. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some really ugly people for my next film here. So, and, and I'm interested, you know, because I understand that <clears throat> underneath those helmets are some really top-notch disfigurements. So, oh, jeez. Hey. There will be no next film, not unless you give in to the power of commercialism. Join me and make funny movies. I'm tired of making comedies. They, they have no substance, and they don't say anything about the way I feel. Then prepare to die. What? Extra 45. 
glorified magnum hanging around because I could blast do something with you because I'm, I'm about to be branded with this with this microwave phallic symbol here. <laughs> Drop your weapons. <laughs> so, Luke Skywalker. At your answering service. And Han Solo, my old racquetball foe. You never could return a backhand. Return this. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe this. Didn't I take you to my high school prom? You, you, you should really consider electrolysis, you know. He's, he's, he's so sweet, God bless. Yes. It's all over, Vader. You've taken your last meeting in this town. That's right. Woody will never sell out. We'll see about that. Woody. Remember the force, Woody. The force, Woody. Well, say the secret, Woody, and the Force will be with you. Remember your Force, Woody, your sense of humor. The Force transcends all negative things. Fear, death, even a Reagan administration. You mean you want me to join Darth Vader? My boy, never align yourself with anyone whose face looks like the front end of a 53 Buick. Trust your instincts. Make films on your own terms. Well, you're a lovely couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you all night. But the time has literally come for you to play, you bet your life. Sorry. The old man, Obi-Wan Groucho, has taught you well. But if you go by his words, choose to live by them, you shall die. Hey, wait, wait, wait. My sir, as a fool, believe this. Listen to the chorus. Beyond this destiny, we shall find other understandings. For now, we've blown it. side won't rear its ugly head in this town again. Well, I, I have to be off now because I, I promised Dan Rather I'd give him a lift home. So if you'll excuse me. Oh, oh. Wait! Can I have your autograph? Oh, yeah, Woody, not... we're your biggest fans! Oh, this is Woody. not the time. Woody. 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 I'll make Woody. it out to my Are town. You I haven't done the time to do it. Thanks for everything. This is the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Good evening, I'm Melanie Chardoff and these are tonight's top stories. The Voyager 1 spacecraft to Saturn continued this week to send back startling photographs of the ringed planet. Earlier in the week, scientists were baffled by the presence of a small dark mass appearing on one of Saturn's rings. Today, after enlarging that photo several thousand times, euphoric scientists announced that they had analyzed that dark mass successfully and found it to be the Haitian refugees who had been chased off the island of Cayo Lobos in the Bahamas. On the political scene, President Jimmy Carter said this week that after he leaves office, he plans to return home to work on his memoirs and live the life of a loser. <laughs> The president's memoirs are tentatively titled, How Ronald Reagan Whipped My Ass. <laughs> and they describe how Carter could rise from obscurity in Plains, Georgia, to the most powerful office in the land and still wind up in obscurity in Plains, Georgia. 
Well, Prince Charles, who turned 32 today, ended speculation about his marriage plans when he announced that he will wed 300-pound female impersonator Divine in a quiet ceremony. <laughs> the prince said he fell in love with Divine after seeing a midnight screening of Pink Flamingos. <laughs> in other domestic news, when you're wrong, you're wrong. And so it was for Anita Bryant's ex-husband, Bob Green, who announced this week that he wants Anita back. I finally realized, Green said, that she isn't just for breakfast anymore. <laughs> the Jolton Church of Christ of Nashville, Tennessee, with the blessing of other conservative Christian groups, has launched a nationwide campaign to clean up television. The church has compiled a list of television programs it considers offensive and is threatening to boycott advertisers who sponsor those programs. Included on the list are such popular programs as Soap, Dallas, and Saturday Night Live. Fridays would like to take exception with the Jolt and Church of Christ on two counts. First of all, we are opposed to this blatant attempt to impose their views and standards on the country at large. Secondly, we're bothered because we're not on the list. <laughs> this oversight of excusing us and excluding us is a clear-cut case of discrimination against a new show. And we have worked hard to be tasteless and offensive. <laughs> and we here humbly suggest that our sketches, Diner of the Living Dead and Women Who Spit, are classics of that genre. <laughs> now, we believe, as much as any new show, we deserve a place on that list. Good news from Portland, Oregon, where Daryl Thomas was reunited with his mother after 22 years. Lost at the age of two months, Daryl turned up this week when movers found him wedged between the cushions of the family sofa. We come now to a most unusual experiment in the field of behavioral psychology. And for that report, we'd like to welcome back Friday's science correspondent, Mr. Bruce Mahler. Welcome back, Bruce. Thank you. Now, Thank you, Melanie. Bruce, what exactly is the focus of your research this week? Well, as you know, Melanie, aggressive behavior takes many forms. Uh, wife beating, child molesting, uh, perverse sexual activities, to mention but a few. But the particular type of activity that we're studying here is called nonspecific aggression. This is the venting up of, uh, uh, the venting of pent-up hostilities on inanimate objects. And why are you working with vending machines, Bruce? Well, these machines uh, invariably bring out, uh, or bring out these feelings. Thank you. Yeah, so um, now, uh, can I demonstrate this for oh, you? Please. Yes. Yes, do demonstrate. Okay, well, uh, surely. Now, I'm just going to uh, endeavor, <laughs> endeavor to uh, get a drink of uh, soda, and we can monitor my vital signs, uh, temperature, blood pressure, uh, heartbeat, on this graph right here, you see. And uh, also, <laughs> also any biochemical uh, fluids. Uh, you see, these sponges will uh, collect any perspiration that occurs, and then uh, in collecting bottles will uh, drain them, and I can, uh, I can absorb, I can analyze that later. So uh, I'm just going to put 50 cents in here and try to get a soda. Okay, well, you know, I lost 50 cents, as you can see on the graph. Uh, there's a certain amount of anxiety, but uh, it's nothing to be too concerned about. Let me just try one more time here. Okay. Uh, this sometimes happens, and you just have to give it a little tap sometimes. You know. <laughs> All right, I have to say I'm experiencing a certain amount of anger about this, but uh, as you can see, it's within uh, statistical range. Uh, let me just try this one more time. Let's try this one last time. And
uh, come out of this research? What, what conclusions have you drawn from your research? Conclusions? Yes. <laughs> well, you really have to have exact change with these machines. Thank you, Bruce, for that most informative. And now, we at the Friday edition would like to issue an apology. Our previous broadcasts uh, referred to Ronald Reagan as old senile, and we said he had red hair because his head was rusted. <laughs> and uh, all that was said before we realized that he could actually become the president. <laughs> well, since that election, we've had a lot of time to think it over, and we've come to the conclusion that Ronald Reagan isn't such a bad guy after all. <laughs> you know, he has his good points. For example, he's not at all vindictive. He would never use his powers, like, for example, the power to instruct FCC commissioners, the people who control television, to punish anyone who had made fun of him in the past. <laughs> uh, in fact, the more we think about it, a Ronald Reagan presidency is okay with us. <laughs> He's from California, and we're from California. And we kind of like to think about him as our hometown boy. <laughs> and Ronnie? Anytime you want to come and see this show, we've got front row center seats for you. We do. And afterwards, if you'd like, you can go on over to Darrow's house for a little pick-me-up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what we're trying to say, Ronnie, is we're with you all the way. Good luck. I'm Melanie Chardoff. Good night. This has been the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. He was a man rejected by society, an outcast, jeered at, reviled, forced to hide his face beneath a hood. This is a story of pain and loneliness, of human suffering and human strength. It will move you as no motion picture has before. The Elephant Joke Man. What was the elephant doing on the road? About three miles an hour. Lying! Oh, That's not funny. Jackie Merrick is the elephant joke man. How do you get an elephant out of the theater? You can't, it's in his blood. Too enough already. Oh, come on, give us a break. Don't miss the elephant joke man coming soon to a theater near you. I'm not an animal. I'm a stand up comic. You're not funny. Don't miss the Elephant Joke Man. Uh, bartender, two uh, scotch and waters, please. All the lonely people, where do they all come from? You got me, friend. Bartender? Bartender, they're doing it again. They're putting chemicals in our water. Frank Sinatra, he's behind this. Frank Sinatra. Man, what a kook, you know? It seems like half the people that come in here are some kind of a nut. Something. The Golden Boys are taking care of themselves. We're young, we're good looking, we keep ourselves regular. <laughs> like my brother said, we're eating right, we're sleeping right, and we take care of our personal hygiene. And I'll tell you something right now 
If anyone tries to give us some germs, we'll be there. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, brother. Sinatra. The Golden Boy's got no use for him. He's nothing. He's a bum. He can't sing. He can't act. He can't come over my house. Frank, if you're listening, you stink. Yeah, you've been running from us long enough. We're young. We're good looking. We've got a definite problem with Sinatra. Hey, hey, Luscious, Luscious. Hey, hey, Luscious, Luscious. Come on, Luscious, Luscious. Hey, Luscious. Come on, let's listen to some real music. I'm with you, handsome. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Make a selection, Lenny. Yeah. Some bozo, the ladies with me. Let me tell you something. The Golden Boys are likely to call Bozo, Clarabelle, or any other name for a clown. Well, maybe you'd like to do something about it. Hey, 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 come on, come on, break it up, break it up. I think you better oh. leave. No, <laughs> and that's what you get for messing with the Golden Boys. We are ready. <laughs> Hey, if you guys uh, are doing anything later, why don't you come visit me? Let me tell you something. The Golden Boys will be there! Saturday night, November the 15th, Marjorie Dombrowski's apartment. 2700 Benson Avenue in Brooklyn. 
This is the one we've been waiting for. We're young, we're good looking, we're extremely horny. Like my brother said, we've been waiting a long time for an opportunity like this. And I tell you right now, when we get there, we'll be there! Many of you have uh, wondered what our young filmmaker Tom Kramer looks like. Well, this is he, and this is his next film, right now. Okay, O'Malley, I want you to know one thing. You're in my prison now, you go by my rules. Kurt? Yeah. What? Yes, warden. You better be tough, O'Malley, because I could show you figures from this place that would scare the hell out of you. Those cons out there are going to tear you apart. Put him on ice. What do you mean? What do you mean on ice? What do you mean? What do you mean? Hey, what do you mean by that? What are you guys doing? What do you mean, Ice? Hey, come on. this, O'Malley. Thank you. 
Trilogy of the Brotherhood, Part Four. I call to order this emergency meeting of the Brotherhood of Men who hum between words. All rise for the Brotherhood of Men who hum between words, traditional, ceremonial, pre-war, battle hum against those who would have to harm against those who would harm. <coughs> Excuse us, hmm? Yes, hmm. With all due respect, oh, wise and leader, mm -hmm. if we don't find a safe place to hide, we'll never, ever hum again. Mm -hmm. uh, but brothers, 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 we are protected by these sacred ornaments. What, these? These? These date back into the very origins of the brotherhood of men who have been doing words. Be calm and deal. Yeah, be calm and deal. These armaments will protect us aptly from those who wish to do us harm. Brothers. Brothers, 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 keep your mm, robes on. Mm. I never. Now let's mm, put it to a mm, vote. Mm. Mm. Now, all right, now, now, all those in favor mm, of donning the sacred armaments mm, of the Brotherhood of Men Who Hum Between Words mm, as protection mm, against the onslaught of our attackers mm, say absolutely nothing. Mm. Now, all those opposed mm, remain silent. Mm. Who won? I don't know. Seemed pretty close to me. I'll tell you something. With or without helmets, we're dead meat. Brothers, I must protest oh, now. Oh, brothers, oh, halt! Oh, halt! Oh, where do you think you're going? Be seated! Be seated! Brothers! Uh, I, for one, mm, am not willing mm, to sacrifice mm, my life mm, for a hum hum. Hum. But mm, I'll say this: mm, when you think about it, mm, uh, dying for a hum mm, doesn't make much mm, sense. Mm, better, uh, better than to run mm, than to hum. Mm. Uh, he who hums mm, and runs away mm, lives to hum mm, another day. Mm. Uh, uh, the early bird catches the hummer. Mm. A hum by any other name. Oh, too many hums spoil the sentence. That's a new one. Mm, I just made it out. What's the difference? Maybe if we talk like normal people, we wouldn't be in this mess. Uh, brothers, oh. brothers, all right, brothers, halt, halt, brothers, sit down, sit down. Brothers, we must stand and no sit down. We must stand and repel those forces who would not have us hum. You can't run away. It's cowardly. It's spineless. It's treasonous. It's a set down. It's set down. Brother, sit. I can't stand. No, sit down. All right. All right. All right. Perhaps my more not bit and pasty at Martin Cotton to Mark and see. But nothing did not be even said that Biden do not respond well to the not crisis situation. So we'll just put and didn't do not vote. 
all those in favor of defending the realm of the harm against those attackers who would not have us harm. Same so by saying absolutely nothing. All those who would rather than simply split and say absolutely in silence. All right, all right. Now don't panic. Don't panic. Christian Jacobs. This is Melanie Chardoff. Join us in two weeks on Fridays with special guest stars, Heart.